So I have the Equinox and the Deus here, both with the smaller coils on it, just to make it a little bit easier to do these tests. So I have a, a heart, gold heart pendant and a piece of foil. I also have a small gold ring that Jim found, small gold ring, white gold, that Jim found with his MX-7 and another piece of foil. And both of these targets read up about the same numbers this this gold pendant reads up the same numbers as this gold foil on both these machines. This gold ring reads up about the same numbers as uh, this piece of foil on both machines. And I'll actually do a review of this de this detecting innovation shaft right now. This is the best thing that I could have ever done for the Equinox. When I first started out, I actually right from the box, I uh, I opened my Equinox up and I swapped, I put actually this Detecting Innovations De Telenox shaft on it. Why I think this shaft is so awesome because it has this little spline, this has, it has this little guide on the bottom side all throughout the whole coil, right? Or all, all throughout the whole shaft here. And it says, and, and it's a three stage telescoping shaft, right? So it can go really short. It actually goes really short. You know, comparing this to the detect edge shaft, that is a two-stage shaft. Um, the tele not the uh, de detect edge shaft does not have this little spline back here. So when you want to extend your your uh, detector out there, when you want to extend the shaft out, it wants to spin on you because you have the coil wrapped around there and it wants to spin on you when you're trying to adjust the uh, length of the detector. It's just a little bit funky, you know, how, how they have that. You know, uh, with Jim, I always see him stepping on his coil and messing with it so it doesn't spin on him when he's trying to adjust it. With this detecting innovation shaft, it always stays in the right angle, right? I have had to replace a couple screws here because this shaft um, this carbon fiber shaft here, this uh, this webbing, this uh, paper on the outside there, it wears out, and eventually this clamp won't tighten down very tight. So I had some problems with it slipping. You know, you can see uh, you can see how it's worn out right here. This stuff eventually wears out, and your the clamp eventually doesn't stay on there anymore. But they've since improved this shaft here. If you get the one without this uh, paper on the out, this foil on the outside of it, they're a lot better. But I found myself quite a few times in top lots with um, this machine here, and it is so freaking awesome having a short detector in top lots so you can get in the tight spots, right? Have you seen those guys in the top lots messing with their six foot long detector trying to get in there and you can't? you can't really get uh, those long shafts in the tight spots, right? There's jewelry underneath the top lock play equipment, right? And look at this. This detector shortened down with this detect, uh, detecting animation shaft is actually shorter than the dais, right? It's not shorter than the dais ultralight, right? <laughs> the ultralight's just a little bit, you know, I take this underneath the top lots, but I'm gonna do this test here and I'll show you. And I'll actually, I actually have a couple little tidbits of metal detecting science here for you too. So what I want to do is I want to reject the big piece of foil and I can do that with the Econox, with the Deus. I cannot with the Econox. The Econox does not give me um, a very well modulated tone. It doesn't give me an amplitude of how big of a target I have and how deep that target is, right? You don't really get a lot of information with the tones on the Equinox, but the, the depth meter is very accurate. But Deus does not have a depth meter, but that's the power of full tones. It gives you three dimensionals. It gives you a size, depth, and conductivity of that metal. So you don't have to look at your numbers or anything, right? So look at the numbers on this pendant here, right? Four, five. I'm gonna turn it up here a little bit. Right, it sounds pretty much the same if I'm close to the coil. 
I'm getting a lot of couple double beeps there, but look at the numbers. Four, five. This and this foil here. Getting pretty much the same numbers, and it sounds exactly the same, right? I'm in park two, multi-frequency, right? You want to be in park two in the parks, right? For the gold, you want to get the gold. Now here's that small gold ring here. Solid one, right? Here's the piece of foil here. I don't want to bend it. I don't want to crimp, bend it too much or fold it over on itself because it changes it. I'll show you that here in a minute. Flat piece of foil here. The ring, they sound exactly the same. So I can't tell the size of that target and I can't really tell the depth unless I look at the meter, right? The Deus is awesome on that. That depth meter is very accurate on, on the uh, Equinox, sorry. But with this machine here, if I change, if I change it over to 50 tones, those number, those tones will actually change a little bit. I believe so. I can try that actually right now. 50 tone here. Five, four. No, it's about the same. It's about the same. Didn't really change much. 50 tones. But I'll go back into five tone here. So it doesn't really give you a, a an amplitude or a, 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 an intensity of how big that target is with the, with the Equinox. But it is deadly on foil and it's deadly on the lower conductive targets, right? Now I'll turn the dais on here. And the dais, um, this coil right here is not a normalized number, so the frequencies, so like um, this pull tab will read up higher if I raise my frequency. The X35 coils, you can actually switch it, switch that normalized, normalized setting to off. So your numbers will stay the same on this target no matter what frequency you are in, right? And that, it, so, so it doesn't change the tones on the X35 coils. With the HF coils, you can't do that. So whenever you change the frequencies, when you're in full tones, it's going to change your, your, it's going to change your tone that you're getting for that same target, right? So I'm in hot program, just stock 14 kilohertz hot program. Now, these numbers are going to be the same on here, right? Put that thing over that. These numbers are going to be the same for this, this uh, gold pendant's going to be the same for that foil there, but the, the tones are completely different. Watch the tone, the numbers. 38. This is now tight it is. I'll just put this down here. I don't have to have it. Uh, I don't have to do it like I did the Equinox. I can just put it right here. All right, let's watch. I don't want to get it too close to the coil there because it'll mess my test up here. Right? I don't want to get the remote too close to the coil because it'll mess my test up. 37, All right? This is how tight that tone is, right? Now I'll put this, swing this piece of foil over there. Remember, we got the same numbers on the Equinox. Major overload, right? This is the tone difference. Nice and tight tone, right? And I can tell the depth. It's like a three-dimensional, the, the full tone's like a three-dimensional perspective in the ground, right? Nice and tight tone. They're the same numbers, but the, the intensity of the tone is different, right? Now watch, I'll go with this gold ring here. 32, 33, 32, 33. Now this foil. It's kind of an overload tone, right? Same numbers, it's an overload. <laughs> now I'll show you put this uh, stuff on top of the foil because it's starting to blow away on me. It's kind of windy today. Now I'll just change frequencies, right? See what difference it makes when I change frequencies up to 74 kilohertz. Watch the difference. Pretty amazing here, right? So the higher frequencies is going to um, really respond a lot better to the lower conductive targets. 
and even the bigger lower conductive targets like the foil listen to the difference in tones it gives me right i didn't change any settings except for the frequency i went up to 74 kilohertz this is way different right it's 71 now it was 38 before right 71 and now the same piece of foil that was reading up the same numbers as that in 14 kilohertz listen to tone here major overload it's 68 right 67 major overload right i can even be way back here and i'll swing this one over here it's nice and crisp and clean right i can tell that it's a smaller target there now i'll do this gold ring here nice and tight tone 57 50 57 now the foil here this one sounds about the same, 54. It's actually an overload, listen to it. If you have your headphones on, you would understand uh, if you have a dais, the headphones really make a huge difference. Right, different tones now. You know, the foil is giving them different tones than the, uh, than the, uh, the gold ring. But with the dais, I can tell that it's smaller. But let me show you. I'll show you a little bit of metal detecting science right here. It's called the skin effect, right? With foil, with lower conductive targets. And with um, the reason why it's doing that um, in the higher frequencies, the higher frequencies favor smaller and thinner, lower conductive targets, right? With the ring, that's why it was giving me a higher tone there than that, that thinner target there, because it's actually thicker, right? Um, with the with the lower frequencies, um, with the lower frequencies, it is going to favor those thicker pieces of like iron or thicker pieces of tr uh, trash, whatnot. You know, so I'm going to show you a little bit of science here, and I'll put my camera on my head here. You get to a park for the first time and you find a lot of freaking pull tabs, you know? Those damn people who, you know, pull their pull tabs off their cans and they throw them away. You know, I don't mind those two people too bad, but all machines do this. I'll show you the skin effect, right? You guys get to a site, and there's foil everywhere, all the surface, and you're just digging it up and digging it up. Well. I don't mind those people who throw the pull tabs out. I really don't care too much for the people who do this. Listen to this. I'll fold it once, right? Oh, it's getting higher, right? I'll fold it another time. All machines do this, right? Those damn people who wad up those frickin' gum wrappers drive me nuts, man. Oh, it went down on that one. It's kind of weird. And does this the same in whatever frequency you have with any machine. It's called the skin effect, right? So it's this it's the same conductivity foil, but if it's folded over on itself a bunch of times, it becomes a lot higher conductive, right? Because it's thicker, right? It's thicker. It's going to hit on it a little bit harder. And those deep pieces of foil, like those tin foil, like they have water in between the layers there, they read up really high. The, um, all machines false on foil when it's folded in half, or they don't false, they just reads up higher, you know, um, it's a higher, becomes a higher conductor, right? Just a little bit of science there for you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.